Final commercial week. I'm the president of the Alumni Association and Foundation here at Washburn. And I just want, I know Dr. Farley welcomed you earlier during the lunch, but I want to extend a huge welcome to all of our guests that are here today uh, for this really exciting and fun event. It is absolutely fantastic to see all of you in person. Uh, for those that could be here, we missed you uh, over the course of the last year, and it's great to see all of the activity and our friends and donors and alumni on campus again. This group, this Washington Women's Venture <laughs> Partner Group, started out uh, back in 2008 with just six members, and I want to talk a little bit about the growth because uh, I know you're up to nearly 30 members now, so you know it was a really good idea uh, back then because it has caught on, it has grown, and the more people that join this group, uh, the greater the impact you make. Uh, and the impact is profound, both on the way that uh, Washburn is able to deliver education to our students, and then the trickle-down effect directly to the lives of the students that receive that assistance. You all are making a huge impact in the lives of our students. Um, it has grown in part because of each of you recruiting your friends and, and getting more people involved, but it has also grown uh, under the guidance of some of the foundation staff people over the years. And uh, one of those is the person who I'm going to call up next, Jeannie Shai, who we were talking a few minutes ago, and she's just a couple days short of 20 years at the Washington University Foundation. So uh, let's give Jeannie Shai a hand. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here today. And it is really good to see all these faces and to see all of you. Um, and it's exciting to see these philanthropic gifts of this very dedicated group of women in action. Um, all these women have stepped forward to reach out and help. And I'm looking forward to learning more and understanding the unique ways in which their gifts um, of their collective philanthropy well, has been impacting Washburn. So we have a great program coming up. Um, I think philanthropy, you see, is really not about the money. It's about using whatever resources you have at your fingertips and applying them to improve the world. And I think we're improving the world uh, maybe one student at a time, but um, all over the campus at Washburn Tech and here at Washburn University. So. This is a fun afternoon, one of my most favorite events of the year. Um, so now it's my honor to call forward a very special lady up to the podium. And you may know this lady because she is a former member of the Washburn women's basketball team. Or, or you may know this lady because she's a member of the Washburn University Foundation Board of Trustees. Or you may recognize her name because she was named as an alumni fellow in 2010. But many of us here in the room know her because she's our leader for Washington Women's Venture Partners. So I'd like to have Chris Rennie please join me and uh, welcome Chris Rennie to the podium. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and welcome to our 13th annual event. And it is indeed exciting to be back together again. Um, as G mentioned, my name is Chris Reedy, and I am a Washburn alumni. And I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And when I first got invited to participate at Washburn Women's Venture Partners, it, I'll be honest, it was my first time back on campus for a few years, <laughs> perhaps decades. <laughs> and meeting the students and the faculty members just reminded me of what a very, very special place this is. So it's been my honor to continue to participate in this and also participate in, in other activities at Washburn. So today we have the opportunity to celebrate some of the outstanding programs and activities that we get to participate in um, from the, the benefit students both across the university campus as well as the Institute of Technology. And an exciting part of being part of WWPP is to see the breadth and the scope that this university and the Institute of Technologies has. And over our 13 years as an organization, 
we have given 154 grants. And this last year, we reached a major milestone where cumulatively, we have given over a half a million dollars. <laughs> provide technology for classrooms, they enhance learning, educational lectures, transformational experience for, for our students. So we're just a group of women who have a passion for Washburn and just a joy in being together and being able to share in some of these activities. We each commit to an annual gift and then collectively those monies are put together. So, so when there are a hundred of you involved, just think of how many gifts we can give out. <laughs> so, so it's an exciting activity. And if you're interested in joining us, we'd be thrilled to have you. And there is some information at the registration desk when you came in, and I'd encourage you to meet with one of us or with Jeannie, who you met earlier at the program. Um, and so I would just like to take just a minute to recognize my fellow venture partners that are here in the room with us, if you'll just give a wave when I call out your name. So, Tammy Hagen from here in Topeka, Linda Holden Burns from here in Topeka, Karen Alpers, and Jean Good Greenwood, and Judith Hall, and Ann Holting, and Jeannie Hoffmuller, and Mariana Northern, and Brigadier General Deborah Rose, I always like saying that. Brigadier General <laughs> Deborah Rose. And Jackie Somerson. And Lynn Weaver. So many of our members are today are from Topeka or from Kansas, but obviously we organize ourselves in a way that you can participate from anywhere in the country. So we'd be delighted to have you. In just a moment, we're going to introduce the projects that we have the opportunity to award just this last year for our 2021-2022 school season. And so we'll just introduce each one of those projects and then we'll also invite a few of them to come tell us about the impact of that. And Brigadeau General Deborah Rose and Ann Holting will be joining me this, this afternoon in introducing some of those grants. So today we're excited to recognize 18 grant recipients for this year. And we've gotten to meet many of them around these tables today. And we thank each one of you for being willing to take some of your day and participate in that way, because it makes it all the more real for each one of us as well. So our first grant is a first grant that we want to recognize this year is one that has been special to our group and that we've funded it for multiple years. And that is the annual iRead lecture. And that helps students learn to discuss ideas and opinions. First year students are asked to read the same book and it's selected that whatever that I read book is for that year and then they participate in classroom discussions <laughs> on that book as well as attend an I read lecture given by the book's author. Um, so it gives them an opportunity for direct interaction in that regard as well. The Washington community also read read this year, The American Pandemic, sounds very contemporary, by Nancy Beersnow, who, to learn more about the 1918 pandemic. So I'd like to uh, invite Sean Bird, the Associate Director of the Navy Library, and Jennifer Wired, the Director of External Relations for the Navy Library, to the podium to just tell us a little bit about that event. Sean, Jennifer, please join us. Sure. Well, we're, we're very grateful to be uh, part of the Venture Partners uh, programming. Uh, the iRead that she's already indicated has uh, developed over several years, has become, I think, one of the Washington University premier programs, uh, bringing people across this campus, across this community, to Pika Shawnee County. Uh, and so it's one of the programs that uh, we look to every year. Uh, to show just what we're about. I had an opportunity before I came in today to go to the admitted seniors event, and as I'm preparing to talk to those students and their guests, uh, the students can't help themselves. They're looking into their uh, phones, they're looking at snippets of information, they're looking at 
uh, social media posts, they're looking at the news feeds that they have, but they're all fragments of information. And I think what this program has allowed us to do is to bring students into Washburn and then to engage students that have already been a part of our community of learning, uh, to have conversations about big ideas. Uh, it's important for me to let you know that while this book is the American pandemic about the 1918 Spanish flu influenza pandemic, it was written in 2012. This is a book that was written as a way to think about the world that we share and to allow students the opportunity to have a conversation about the big ideas of this world that we share, about the role of members of the community, about nurses, about physicians, about families and how we come together when things get tough was so important for us. Uh, so I am grateful for the venture partners in supporting us for the last few years. I'm grateful for the offices of the uh, DPAA and of the president for their support, uh, our partnership with the Department of English and the Department of History, and with the Topeka uh, Shawnee County Public Library. We are so grateful for everybody's support in allowing us to engage our community learning in this way. Well said, Vaughn. Um, I'll just add a couple of thoughts of my own, I suppose. And I think that this will come as no surprise to you because you've all lived through the same last 18 months that our students have, but these have been a really rough 18 months for our students. Um, they feel divided not only in the information that they receive, these fragments of information that Sean was talking about, but they feel like they live in a really divided world. And one of the things that I love about working at a university is that I have to think every day with my students about ways to bring people together. And the I read is one such opportunity that we have to bring people together and to think about how we should live non novi saloon. And so that's really what our I read program is all about. Um, we did not choose this book because we wanted to be trendy and contemporary. Um, we chose this book because it gives us an excellent way to introduce our students to thinking about the common good. What does it mean to live not for ourselves alone? What does it mean to get this education from Washburn and then do something with it that's going to improve the common good? And we had a really simple message to our students throughout. We know that you've experienced a really rough 18 months, but Ichabod's changed the world. You are going to change the world. So use this book, use this program to think about the change that you are going to be and don't waste this common experience. And our students have received that message, I think, really well. So thank you again for your support. Thank you for reading along with us. If you're a venture partner and you have not yet received your free copy of the I Read book, talk to Sean Bird. <laughs> thank you. Our second grant this year was for the Mass Media Department, and it was a satellite 3D studio. And it's the world's first photo studio, studio simulation where you can build lighting sets in advance on a PC and realistically sim simulate what the expected picture results will be. So being able to learn how to do this, do the setup lighting of a studio environment in that remote way was probably critically important for this particular time frame, but also important for the future for our students as they learn how to work in this kind of environment. So I'd like to invite Victor Ramirez and Anna Pfeiffer, or Pfeiffer, excuse me, Victor and Anna to come to the podium to tell us a little bit about that. And then with that, I will turn it over to Deborah. But please welcome Victor and Anna. Thank you so much for donating this program to us because it really did help us um, prepare our studio um, before we showed up, knowing what kind of lights we needed um, for on set. Uh, also, it helped us save some energy because those lights have like they take a lot of energy. Um, so knowing what lights we needed, what they were going to look like for our characters and stuff like that, it just really helped us prepare our um, set for when we were there. They also saved us a lot of time. And also, they gave us a lot of like hands on, uh, but not also have to be in the studio uh, because with COVID and everything, we wanted to make sure that we say, you know, everyone was safe. So we had this program at home. We could play around with it and get that real life experience without having to be in the studio. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, just, I guess, to go off of what Anna said, um, 
truly, um, during COVID, it was a very interesting time for all of us, especially film students. Uh, majority of our uh, projects are hands-on, our group of projects teamwork. Um, so it still allowed us to uh, have that uh, film experience, and as much as it already is difficult to have that in Kansas, usually the Western, Eastern Science usually have uh, a lot more things for us. this year pertain to healthcare technology. And for me, that's really important because of my age. I need nurses. And because I am a nurse, I graduated from Washburn School of Nursing. So this is real, real close to my heart. This past year and a half, we've all seen how important healthcare is to our world and the broad scope of making sure that we not only have good technology in our care facilities, but also well-trained people. WWVP knows Washburn University plays a central role in that through Washburn Tech and Washburn <laughs> University School of Nursing. We were happy to be able to provide the healthcare technology department at Washburn Tech, which teaches certified nurse aid and practical nursing with a sit-to-stand mechanical lift, a mannequin cart, an O2 compressor, and basic care simulator. We were also able to provide a vitals monitor with a rolling stand for the practical nursing program. We were able to provide an otoscope, a Doppler, and concussion kit, among many other tools. Congratulations. The, the sixth grant is the School of Nursing which has also excelled in continuing to educate students through the pandemic and finding ways to make sure their graduates have their clinical hours despite the limitations in the hospitals. WWVP was proud to provide them with the technology for their STEM simulation lab, including kits for technical skill practice, such as suturing, an IV pump module, IV tubing, birthing simulator cervix for the obstetrics mannequin, and injection trainers. Congratulations to these healthcare programs on receiving these grants, and thank you for all you do to train our future healthcare workers. Our seventh and eighth grants went to the music department for elementary music orf stands, and steel drums for Washburn Steel Ensemble. WWVP has purchased quite a few instruments for the music department in the last decade for students to use, and they not only help current Washburn students, but they also help those students to learn how to properly teach others. Joining us today to tell us about these musical stands and the steel drums is Sherry Cook Cunningham, Assistant Professor and Director of Music Education, and Vaughn Hansen, Assistant Director of Bands. Say thank you for the grant. Um, we, we are very appreciative of it. Um, music, as we all know, is one of those things that we all go back to. And during quarantine, we saw people going back to music. So maybe picking up an instrument they had to play, or singing. TikTok, <laughs> but I help um, educate our future um, music educators, and so on the table is an orc instrument, and that's one of our metallophones. And if you're in third grade or fourth grade, it's really easy to get on the ground and play it. But if you are six foot two and in college, it's not so easy. So thanks to all of you, we will soon have stands to put all those instruments on which will make the teaching of that better, we teach better technique, and it will always make 
also in the storage center. So thank you very much. And we also purchased some steel drums, and the good thing with those is it's, it's going to be a two-fold experience. We have one of our drums here, there's another one like that, and then another set where each person has um, two drums, so total we have uh, eight drums total um, that we'll be using, as the math is six, it's actually six drums. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the idea is we create an ensemble that we can play events like this, we can be back in the corner, we can be music that we uh, accompany something like this, we can also go downtown, uh, we can play at the library, and we can have a lot of community engagement through that. But it's also big and building up with our, um, our students as far as making them marketable, because it's an instrument that's being asked for a lot more, so for them to be able to play it, and then to be able to teach it, it makes them more likely to get a job coming out of Washington. So it's an important skill and something that we can engage with the community and the school at a higher rate. So thank you all again for donating to the Music Department. Thank you, Sherry and Vaughn. And speaking of our music department, Washburn University's theater department is working to grow its program with a new Bachelor of Art in Music, Musical the Theater. WWVP was proud to purchase a Marley floor, which will improve the dance experience for students as they move and turn without the drag of a painted, unvarnished floor. It also allows the theater department to simulate a professional dancing experience and increase the flexibility of the current theater space. Congratulations to the theater department on this grant. And thank you. Washburn Moon Venture Partners 10th grant went to the biology department. Currently, Washburn is a member of the laboratory courses that introduce and teach students many foundational concepts related to molecular biology research. While these concepts are classic and timeless, many new techniques have recently evolved. We are able to help purchase the CRISPR Cas genome editing system, which is one such rapidly developing technique that is used in a variety of applications ranging from pet breeding, creating allergy-free foods, synthesizing green fuels, and treatment of diseases. Congratulations to the biology department on this grant. <laughs> grant number 11. We are also proud to support the Paraprofessional to Teacher program in the education department to provide tuition assistance for 10 candidates in the program. Paraprofessionals often do not make a salary that would allow them to pay for a degree without assistance, so scholarships are essential to encourage those already in the school systems to work towards their education degree. This paraprofessional to teacher program specifically aims to create more teachers working in high intimate special education or STEM. Congratulations to the economic education department on this grant. Grant number 12 and number 13. Our 12th and 13th grants go to the Automated Technology Department at Washington Tech for a picoscope and a drive train training facility. So I'd like to welcome Darren Dillingham, technical instructor for the Auto Technology, to the podium to talk more about how these two technologies are benefiting the students. Darren? Um, first thing is I'd like to uh, express my gratitude towards uh, the venture partnership uh, for everything they've done for Washington Tech. Um, I think one, a couple of things is, is the, the uh, ecoscope. That's, that's something that every shop has, but most shops that are getting technicians that are my age are leaving in droves. Uh, and this is a newer type of a diagnostic equipment that the young technicians really need to use. Um, probably every shop out there has one, and probably most of them are gathered in this. So uh, we're bringing in a new field of technicians into the field. 
uh, the, and, and the drivetrain uh, room. Uh, the, the other thing is, is I, I don't know that you realize just how much you bring to uh, or a vision. Uh, a lot of this stuff that we receive through the uh, partnership uh, we don't really fund anywhere else. And uh, so, you know, where, where we would maybe not look at how we can really improve uh, the facility, uh, would you give us a gift of, of looking at it through, with, with new eyes? We look around now and we're able to say, you know what, if we had this, how much more of an impact would it make on our students? Uh, and, and every year, has more than 25 students each semester that would benefit from the use of ergonomic drafting desks as they usually sit for a prolonged period of time. The current desks have been in place since 1997 when it was the Kaw Area Tech. So it was time for change. WWBP is proud to assist the drafting program with these new desks. Our final grant to Washburn Tech this year was to the Fast Track Building Program. WWBP was proud to award its 15th grant this year to the program for the Valley Tube Bender. This is a hydraulic tube bender that bends tubes and pipes up to 180 degrees. It, turns, it runs on just 110 volts and is an industry standard piece of equipment found in fabrication shops across the country. Students in the program have done hands-on training on work with the Shawnee County Parks and Rec Program, the Combat Air Museum, as well as the Topeka Zoo and the Wharton Park. And it's been challenging to complete some of the work without this equipment. So congratulations on this award. So the chemistry program at Washburn requires students to have highly proficient, be highly proficient with scientific calculators, which are rather expensive. So the chemistry department provides the calculators for students on, the, on their tests. And but the current ones they were using were outdated and did, did not all have all the necessary functions to allow the students to complete their exams in a timely manner. So WWBP was proud to purchase the calculators for this program, and we wish the students the best on their test. <laughs> and the 17th grant for this year was to the Criminal Justice and Legal Studies Program for our Forensic Investigation Digital Camera. And to talk about the importance of this camera, and Amy Beaver, the Associate Professor and Interim Chair of the Criminal Justice and Legal Studies Department, is here to speak to us about this gift. Amy? Thank you. Yeah, your rings are <laughs> We adjust you to not wear this. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hi, uh, thanks to the grant and support uh, that we got for, we were able to purchase three complete camera kits for our um, forensic investigation program. And uh, these camera kits came with much more than just the camera. It was the camera, they had um, extra lenses, different filters, so our students could play around with um, low light settings and trying to get different um, flashes and speeds to have different effects. Um, and I think it really has increased our students, not only their ability to get behind that camera and really get that hands-on experience, but um, their knowledge of everything we're telling them about, not only you want to go into and be a CSI, you have to know about the criminal justice procedure, you have to know about forensic chemistry, but you also have to be a professional photographer. And that, that course just sometimes gets overlooked in when you're looking at what they have to be able to do. But they have to be able to capture every little detail about a scene of a crime. They have to be able to keep those things in focus and to know how to use that instrument. So uh, we, we live now in a time where I'm guessing everybody has a phone on their cell phone in their pockets, right? You're carrying around all day. If you look at mine, it 
50,000, and you think it's mostly just a camera. I don't know if it actually means small team or it's mostly just a camera, right? <laughs> but which pictures of my kids and dog, but it actually has other functions too. Um, but that's what we think of photography as, you know, selfies, point and click. And could you capture a crime scene that way? I mean, if you had to, it's better than nothing, right? You can take pictures. But our students are learning that it is so much more that they're able to do when they learn about different shutter speeds and f-stops and what do those things do, and not only to create the detail in a picture uh, to help at a crime scene or get to a conviction, but we have um, donations of a TBD vehicle that we can put a fingerprint on the door and our students can practice trying to get enough focus that they can capture that fingerprint in detail. So if you think about what your cell phone can do, they're pretty good right now with the cameras on cell phones, but they probably can't do that. Um, if I give it to my husband, I'm lucky everyone's head is in the picture and it's kind of in focus. Um, but our students are learning to use those and then to understand what the data means because that goes into a record. You know, these cameras have become a record for our crime scene. So it tells you the location, the time. It tells you what settings were on the camera. So that we know if suddenly this crime happened in the middle of the day, but the picture makes it look like it's night time, right? Maybe that was super good, right? So our students are learning to interpret what all that data means as well. And we had cameras, but they were getting a little outdated and old and not as dependable. So sometimes our students would have to partner up. So this grant allowed us to get enough cameras that they will all get to have their own camera to use during class to go out there and get more hands-on experience behind the camera and gain that confidence for going into the field. So Thank you very much for your support, and we appreciate it. Thank you. And our final grant for this year was for the Ichabods Moving Forward. This is a student philanthropic organization on campus, and the group raises money to help their fellow students through financial crises that could potentially impact their ability to stay in school. Examples include helping a fellow student with a car repair, rent for a month, or the supplies for a project or a class. And with WWBP support, we were able to help four students stay in school, especially in a very unpredictable year like the past one. So we're proud to be able to support this student group who has taken that initiative on their own to apply for this grant and then help their fellow students, which is quite admirable. Those are the 18 worthy projects that we received funding for through the WWVP partners for 2021, 2022. But there were many more that we would have liked to have funded. So as a member, as our membership at WWVP grows, so does our ability to go shopping, as I refer to it, when we have the opportunity to review all of these grants. So if you're a prospective member, we would welcome the opportunity to talk to you about it. Others of you that may know someone who would be interested in joining us, and if so, please just give Jeannie Shy that name and uh, we will follow up on that as well. In December, we will begin our process for accepting new funding proposals for a lot of you who want to start working on your, your writing skills, so watch for that information. And then we will be selecting our funding for 2022-2023 school year at our meeting next April. Again, I do want to thank you for joining us today, and it's just a thrill to be able to be together again. And I'd like to congratulate each one of the recipients and just thank you for what you do day in and day out in a very challenging environment and in a challenging year to impact our students and ultimately impact our society. So thank you very much for being with us today and just keep on generating those great ideas and educational experiences. Thank you.